Before we start, morning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a 2013 Korean thriller movie called Hide and Seek. This movie tells the story of a man's remorse for his adoptive brother. He intended to find his adoptive brother's whereabouts and apologize. But, instead of resolving his remorse, he found his family's life threatened. The story begins with a woman named Yoon Hee. She is walking back to her apartment from her office through the slum area near her apartment while calling her boyfriend. She got harassed by a drunk man. But luckily, she managed to get away and continue her walk home. She got really mad. Along the way, she keeps complaining to her boyfriend about her crappy apartment. When she boarded the apartment elevator, suddenly someone with a black helmet came in. That person came into the elevator but didn't press the elevator button. Yuni pressed the elevator button to her apartment floor. The person in the helmet gets out from the lift on the same floor as Yunhee. He stops in front of the apartment beside her apartment. Yunhee passes those people and closes her door tight. She found an unknown jacket in front of her computer. Enraged, she visited her neighbor angrily. Yuni is sure that her neighbor was sneaking into her apartment silently. She threatens to make a report to the police if her neighbor sneaks in again. Yuni starts the computer and checks the CCTV record. But, a sudden door knock distracts her. She checks around but there is no one there. She took her pepper spray and came closer to check properly. Apparently, that sound is made by a little girl. Yuni forgot that she left her apartment with the door open. After making sure that there is no one, Yuni came back to her apartment and continued to check her CCTV record. She then realizes that there is someone who sneaks into her apartment while she checks for someone who knocks the door outside, and that person is still inside her apartment, standing on the edge of the room with a steel rod full of blood. That person hit her head and killed her without no one knowing about it. Apparently, in the place where Yunhee lives, there is a rumor about a squatter who hides inside someone's apartment and stays there silently. Story skipped into Song Su's apartment where he lives with his wife, son, and daughter. His wife, Minji, previously lived in the United States. Sung Su has a chronic misophobia disease that makes him afraid of something dirty. When he checks his cafe, his employee reports to him that a madman is sitting on the sidewalk in front of his cafe. At dinner time, Sung Su tries to get used to a messy table. Her wife tries to help him but he refuses and says that he is alright. Not long after that, Sung Su got a call from someone who asked about someone named Sung Chol. Those calls apparently came from Sung Chul's apartment landlord. Sung Chul's landlord said that he is missing. It turns out that Sung Chul is Sung Su's stepbrother that he hates so much. A long time ago, Sung Su was adopted by Sung Chul's family. But, Sung Su apparently hates him. He lost contact with his brother after their parents died. He never told anything to his relatives, even his wife doesn't know that Sung Su has a stepbrother. The next day, Sung Su and his family came to his stepparent's cemetery. He also asked about Sung Chul to the cemetery guards, which made the guards quite angry because Sung Chul never came to this cemetery. Previously, Sung Chul's landlord already told Sung Su about their address, thus, he tried to visit Sung Chul's apartment. On the way, Min Ji asked about Sung Chul that was never mentioned in their past life. In front of Sung Chul's apartment, Sung Su got out of his car and left his wife and child inside the car. The landlord then explains to Sung Su that Sung Chul has stayed in this apartment since two years ago after getting out of jail. Apparently, there are quite many cases of missing people in these apartments. Many illegal immigrants are staying in these apartments. Since the rent cost is cheap, security and cleanliness are not properly maintained there. The city council planning for destroying the whole apartment complex in the next few months. After opening Sung Chul's apartment unit, the apartment landlord left Sung Su alone to take all his stepbrother's belongings. The apartment unit is quite messy. Sung Su looked around the apartment and found no one there. But, Sung Su found some tampons on the toilet that made him ask whether his brother stayed there with someone else. The apartment landlord said that he never sees Sung Chul stay with anyone else. This adds confusion to Sung Su since he found tampons in his brother's bathroom. Sung Su tries to ask the apartment neighborhood but it seems like they don't want to help him and feel afraid. In front of every apartment unit, Sung Su finds a strange symbol of triangle, square, and circle. After inspecting it for a few seconds, he found out that those symbols indicate people who stay at those units. 
the circle symbolizes man, the triangle symbolizes woman, and the square symbolizes children. But, there is another unknown V symbol in his brother's apartment. Outside of the apartment, Min Ji called her parents in the United States. She tells her parents about Sung Su's stepbrother that has never been told to her up until now. Her child wants to play some games outside. Min Ji allowed it but told them no to go too far away. She suddenly felt a strange gaze then found a stranger stare at her. She looks away and finds the stranger gone. Her child is also missing from his sight. She panicked and ran outside to look for her child. She asked a little girl what she found there, but the little girl seemed afraid of her instead. Not long after, the mother of that little girl came and told Minji to go away. She came back to her car and found her child inside the car with the stranger. A woman with her child came with a taser and tried to help her. The stranger got out of the car and ran away. Sung Su came back from his stepbrother's apartment. He thanks the woman who helped them. This woman called Jo he is a mother of a daughter. Sung Su's family got invited into her apartment. It is quite large. Jo he has just moved into this apartment unit. While preparing some beverages, she also told them that her husband is Australian and they plan to go to Australia someday. She then asks Sung Su about the reason he came into this rundown apartment complex. Sung Su tells her about his stepbrother. He tells Jo he about his brother's apartment unit, which makes Jo he shocked, and asks them to get out of her house. Jo he asks him to tell Sung Chul to stop peeking at her daughter. His wife once again asked him about Sung Chul and what did his brother do up until now. But Sung Su, who doesn't seem to know the answer, told her to go home with their child first. While he would investigate his brother more. On their way home, Min Ji feels like they got followed by someone. On the other side, Sung Su slept in his stepbrother's apartment, but when he washed his hands, he heard some weird noise. He was sure that it was Sung Chul, but he found no one while checking there. He then found that his apartment key and phone were missing from his coat. Sung Su then heard another sound and when he checked he found a secret passage beside Sung Chul's apartment. He goes through the secret passage and gets out to another apartment unit. That unit is owned by Yoon Hee, the girl that got killed early in the movie. There Sung Su found the same apparel type as the one in Sung Chul's apartment. At the same time, Min Ji came back to her apartment. When she walked to the elevator, she met a stranger with a full face helmet and a black jacket following her into the apartment. Those people also have a key to enter the elevator section. Minji was afraid, but stayed positive and came into the elevator. At first, the man with the helmet was not pressing the floor button. In front of their apartment, Minji is reluctant to press their password. Her child thought that her mother forgot about her password and said it out loud. To prevent the bad thing, she changed her apartment password. Not long after, Minji got info that she got a delivery at the security center. She goes to the apartment security center. Minji got a call from Sung Su, which panically tell Minji to stay at their apartment until he got home. He then ended the call. Minji then just realized that the package he got from the security office is empty. Their child then calls her and said that the yogurt seller is in front of their apartment. The child wanted to open the door but was prevented by Minji. Minji now running into their apartment as fast as possible to protect their child. The person in front of their apartment also tried to press the password, which is incorrect because Min Ji changed it a few moments ago. Min Ji cannot use the elevator because the elevator is jammed. Min Ji ran up the stairs to their unit. The door knocking sound is not heard anymore. Her child came near the door, but when he tried to peek out, the person's hand grabbed his foot and tried to pull it out. The person went away when Min Ji came. Min Ji opened the door and found her child to be okay. Suddenly someone tried to attack her from behind using an umbrella. She defended herself and yelled. Those people got away when her neighbor came out and looked for what happened. When Sung Su came back to the apartment, he found a lot of police around. His wife was previously attacked. From the CCTV record, they find that person may be Sung Chul. Sung Su's stepbrother that previously got jailed because of sexual assault. The next day, Sung Su came back to Sung Chul's apartment with a golf bat. He doesn't want to get harassed anymore. Since he found no result, he came back to his car and tried to find out from things that were left by his brother at the apartment. At that time, he saw a man in a full face helmet pass by his car. With a golf bat, he tried to follow that person. 
Apparently, that person seems to realize that he is being followed and runs away. Sung Su chased that man to the apartment complex. When he tried to take a rest, a strange man came and hit Sung Su hard. He runs and they fight on the rooftop. Sung Su that initially loses can turn the tide and make the man who attacks him hurt more. That man then explained who he was. It turns out that the man is Yoon Hee's boyfriend. He said that Yoon Hee lost contact with him a few weeks ago. He thinks that Yoon Hee has an affair and left him. Not long after, he realizes that a man using a helmet is peeking from the window. He chases him and goes through the secret passage. Now Yoon Hee's boyfriend realizes that they are inside Yoon Hee's apartment unit. Sung Soo then checked around and found someone hiding inside the closet. Which is Yoon Hee's dead body. In the middle of his shock, the person with the helmet came to Yoon Hee's boyfriend and stabbed him from behind. That person also tries to stab Sung Soo, but he is able to take the knife and fight with that person. Sung Soo almost opens that person's helmet but the knife is taken back and that person stabs him. Almost got killed, Sung Soo tried to fight back. Then, he ran away and asked for help from the little children that he met a few days ago. After making sure that the door is locked, Sung Soo checks if there is a secret passage there. Luckily, there are no secret passages there. Johee's daughter brings first aid and he cleans up his wound. Sung Soo then asked about Johee's whereabouts to her daughter and she answered that Johee is currently at work. Johee's daughter then grabs Sung Soo's phone from his coat. When Sung Soo wanted to take his phone, Johee's daughter didn't want to give it back to him and said that those phones belong to her. Sung Soo took the phone forcefully. Johee's daughter cried and yelled out loud. Trying to calm her down, he said that the phone is hers and he only borrowed it for a while. Sung Soo then opens the phone, but it has no battery. Thus, he asked to lend another phone to the child. The girl agreed and she came to her room taking another phone, followed by Sung Soo. Her room was quite large with a lot of toys and items that looked familiar to Sung Soo. Not only that, there are a lot of cell phones there. The girl said that those are all her phone and lent one of them to Sung Soo. After opening the phone, he realizes that those are his old missing phone. Sung Soo then asks about how she can get this phone. Apparently she got that from her mom. She also shows him their new apartment that apparently is his apartment. Shocked, he tripped and fell away. Then he looked into the closet and found something strange. He checked it and found Sung Chul's body inside the closet. Jo Hee came from behind and hit Sung Chul using a steel rod and took away all the items he had left in his pocket. Apparently, Joe he always kills people that own an apartment and live in their apartment. But, if the death of the apartment owner was found out, then they will move into another house. Joe he asks her daughter to prepare for moving into their new house. On the other side, Min Ji and her child are preparing themselves to go back to the United States. Min Ji called Sung Su but she got no answer. They prepared to go back to the United States and left their house, while Joe he and her daughter prepared to move into Sung Su's house. They walk directly into Sung Soo's apartment since they have the key. Before Min Ji starts the car, she finds out that her daughter is sick. Min Ji forgot their medicine, thus she asked her son to lock the door and don't go anywhere. At the same time, Sung Soo is actually still alive. He stood up and went away as fast as possible. Min Ji came into their house. Took some medicine for her daughter, and at that time, Min Ji got a call from Sung Soo. Sung Soo tells Min Ji that Joe He is the culprit behind all this tragedy. Sung Soo then asks Min Ji to call the police and stay with her kid. But Min Ji instead called Sung Soo's phone, and she found out that the phone was ringing nearby her. In the kitchen, she found an item that previously did not exist there. Joe He then hit Min Ji using a steel rod from behind. Joe He came to the car and asked them to get out of the car. She said that their mother is out for a while to do some errands. The child is hesitant to go out because the son found that Joe he uses their mother's coat. Joe he became angry and forced the child to get out of her car. Then she realized that she had the car key inside the coat. She opened the car with that key. The child ran away using the door from the other side. Sung Soo is now at the apartment and cannot come in because he doesn't have the key anymore. He tries to get in from the basement and hears their child yelling around. He tries to chase Joe he, but his hurt leg prevents him. The kids run into the elevator. Almost got caught. The kid safely returns to their house, but Joe he tries to open the apartment door forcefully. 
The kid became more hysterical when they found their mother bathing in blood. Luckily, it is Sung Su who came and opened the door. Joe came from behind and tried to hit him using a steel rod. They fight in the hallway. Sung Su turned the tide and now Joe tried to run away. Sung Su tries to wake her wife up. He then takes the steel rod and looks for Joe around his house. He looks for her under the bed, but unfortunately, she is on another bed. She takes the steel rod and hits Sung Su with it. The kid tries to stop her. She chases them. Almost caught the kid, Min Ji awoke and hit Joe He from behind. Unfortunately, Joe He was still awake and hit Min Ji back using the steel rod. Joe He then got angry because now he has a messed up house. She then hears some sound in the closet. She came near the closet. Sung Su then calls Joe He and asks her to stay calm. Joe He tries to hit Sung Su, but he turns on the match and prepares to burn up the house. Joe He became reluctant because she was afraid the house got burnt. Police came and made her continue the attack on Sung Su by suffocating him. Sung Su grabs the match and throws it to burn the house. Joe He became hysterical and tried to put the fire down. She tried to stop the fire but got caught in it as well. The fire detector turned on and the police opened the door successfully. Police came into the house and saved Sung Su's family life. The story ended with Sung Su burying Sung Chul's body in a better place. Their apartment got sold to the new owner that already moved there as soon as they got out. There, Johi's daughter is still trapped and hiding inside the closet. The story ended with the same rumor spreading about squatters that live in another person's apartment on those apartment complexes. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and see you, next time.